today I spent $40,000 on a bunch of fake coral. My nemesis, the Hilo. Not gonna lie, bro, you're getting pretty good at that. Yeah, practice makes perfect. What are you doing? I'm trying to get these forks over, but I don't know how they go. You did it. And it's arrived. Now you might think $40,000 is a lot of money, but truth is these coral inserts cost a ton of money. We probably have about $250,000 worth of coral inserts that we've already spent, but this is the first shipment that has arrived. And the most important thing is, let's hope they aren't damaged. Look at that, that's a lot of coral. Right now they look like they're in good shape. I think we're okay. We'll have to drag it out, and then once we get them out, we can take a little closer inspection. Easy peasy, we can probably just lift that. Just us. It doesn't have a you know I mean? bell jack. You go on the end. I'll go, the we'll, I'll go grab a toe strap. Yeah. We'll put a strap around the pallet. Pull it out. And then pull it pick out. Pick it up. Yeah. It's the only option we got. That's crazy looking. Well, we don't know one of them. One of them is just, we, we haven't decided yet. And the next thing is to try to get them in the building and not mess them up that way. At least I'm not responsible for them today. These are giant coral inserts that are going to go into the saltwater predator fish tank. So we got to make sure that they get into the building, we get them upright so we can inspect them to make sure they're in good shape. And then as soon as we can, we need to actually lift them up and put them inside the tank so that when a meds team comes back, he can actually theme them right down to the bottom of the tank. the truck but we have to get it inside there's not a lot of room plus it's a little bit of a, a bumpy ride so I'm hoping it doesn't fall off looks like the coral inserts came good I don't see anything broken which is pretty amazing I can't wait to actually see them oh hold on hold on hold on bro hold on bro Woo! Professional right there, dude. Honestly, that's impressive. Okay. You cold? What's that? Yeah, freezing cold. It's 37 degrees outside here. <laughs> I'm not made for 37 degrees. I'm used to 85 degrees in a reptile room. Good. Good. I'm not gonna lie, it is a little bit nerve-wracking, guys, because you figure one bad move, you know, something falls off or something like that. I mean, these are $20,000 per coral insert. This is when the heart rate goes up. That's why I figured I would drive the high-low, because if I drop it, then I only can blame me. If Mike drops it, then uh, Mike has to go find another job. I'm not driving. <laughs> yeah. The pallet's scarier than the high-low driving part. That looks like a rackety pallet. Look at it, it's broken right there. Yeah. Is in operation. <laughs> Step one is done. They're in the house. Time for a little toothbrush. Mike, what Whoa. are you doing? I'm brushing my teeth. It's for the alligator. I ain't brushing my teeth, too. Why? I have a dentist appointment today at 520. Okay, well, could you maybe do it together with Freya? Sure. Brushy, brushy, Freya. Oh, oh, nope. All right, Freya, here's how you gotta do it. Yeah, big smile <laughs> and just rotate. She's just trying to eat it. You're not supposed to eat it. Not all toddlers like toothbrushes. All right, just look in the mirror, Freya. And we're gonna brush, brush, brush. Oh, you're doing so good. You don't need the dentist, you know? You got Connie. All right, Mike, could you hurry up and finish so you can help me? Mm -hmm. Ah. 
step two is uh, trying to see if they're actually in good shape. I would really like to get them unboxed and, uh, and actually stand them up and see what they actually look like, if it's all possible. Do you think it's heavy? It's got it. Here, Mike, grab a side just to see if we can even do this. Nope. <laughs> there they go. Yeah. These are way heavier than I expected. Wow. Yeah, I have no idea how we're uh, going to stand them up, but more importantly, we've got to get them into that enclosure. Not today, but at some point they have to go into that enclosure. I have no idea how we're going to do it. But what we can do is actually unwrap them, at least take a look and see what they look like. It's absolutely beautiful. I mean, just incredible workmanship. There's no doubt about that. What I'm thinking is we probably have enough people to Turn it on it. So then once we get it to the tank, then we can get like straps, like plywood, and like just slowly lower it. We have a couple people on the other side. I don't know, maybe. <laughs> so this we can just go back, back on and glue it. This one, kind of same thing. So there's a couple little broken pieces here and there, but things that should be able to be glued on pretty easily. I don't think it's going to be really that bad. It does look like there's a piece missing right here that I don't even see. So we've got a little bit of repair, but for the most part, it looks absolutely beautiful. This gives you an idea what these poles are going to look like. And you see the poles themed out? This is the idea, is to have like almost like a coral look to them like this. It's going to be absolutely incredible. I tell you what, this is going to be quite the ordeal to try to get these into the tanks, but when they get in the tanks, they're going to look absolutely spectacular. That's going to be you one day when you get all nice and big. And guess what? Salt brushes for teeth. Oh. I got a little bucket. A bucket? That's a cup. <laughs> Mike, what are you doing? What are you doing? I'm trying to get down so I can help you. You okay? You know, just that volleyball. <laughs> I really hurt my back. I fell for a ball and now I can't see it up straight. This morning, Mike was an hour late for work and it's because we thought he overdosed on snickerdoodles. Can we just brush the freaking gators teeth? What do you think? I think it's trash. Now that Laura's here, I think we can lift them up. Yeah, why didn't you call me? Well, now we just need your help. Yeah, that was yeah, what so we were just waiting Just go on. ahead, lift them up to her. Have you seen her guns, dude? Right. I literally just about, like, expected to see her just, like, tire <laughs> flipping. <laughs> <laughs> but today certainly hasn't been a bunch of beautiful corals and butterflies. There's been some headaches as well. And when, as with everything, when you're doing a building project, things kind of uh, take turns and you have to problem solve. So we wanted to get all the walls up behind the enclosure so that when Ahmed's team comes back in just a few days, they can actually theme up onto the wall so it seems seamless. Well, the downside is, is uh, look at the back of this tank and look at where this wall is right here and you can look at all the way down we're looking at like five six inches and basically if you look down at the very bottom the way that Felipe's team laid the cement it kind of is pushed out to where this is actually all the way up against the edge of the back and then it's just kind of awkward so literally we have like a five inch area that I hope on that team can somehow figure out how to theme out because if not I don't know what to do literally we're kind of screwed on it and it looks like it's that way on most of the tanks unfortunately so we have to drywall this first get this all set up. And then when that meds team, he's got to somehow join this to this wall with this big gap. It's definitely not ideal by any stretch, but I'm assuming that he's going to have an idea how to actually do that. But like I said, it's looking like almost all the tanks are like that. The way the concrete was kind of formed is just all out of whack. We're at least two, three inches off on almost every exhibit. So our meds team has their work cut out for him. Oh, he's like he's got a hole in it? How does that happen? I don't know what to say, man. Oh, really? Shut up, my toothbrush! <laughs> Okay guys, so what we're gonna do is now we're gonna not only do her teeth, we're gonna give her a nice little scrub down anyway. Because just like we do for salt, yeah, we wanna make sure she's not getting an algae buildup or anything. But it is important to help your, your alligator get that off so she stays pearly white. Oh, right in the nose. Yeah, you're getting all that dead skin out of there. See, look, she actually enjoys this. Yeah, she's opening her mouth like, oh. Crocodilians. Went through about 2,000 teeth in her life. Can you believe wow, that? that's a lot. Teeth How berry? many did you go through, Mike? I don't even know. As you can see, the plumbers are back. They're actually finishing up the rough plumbing. Once the rough plumbing gets finished up and the inspector gets back from deer hunting and vacation, then he comes in and actually inspects. And then we actually have to get the main building inspector to do the final inspection of the backfill. And then we can actually pour concrete in this thing. So we're one step closer to that. Thankfully, it would be great to actually have floors in this place rather than just piles of dirt and huge chasms of cement. Tell me what you need now so I can... I need a drawing with detail, like this tank, this side. I need like a blueprint of what's going to happen. A lot of water. Hundreds of gallons, yeah. See, then, yeah. then I'm already all wrong. Even your size of pipe was all wrong that I already ran. Yeah, I, I thought it was pretty, yeah, I thought No. Yeah. You're the reptile guy, I'm just the plumber. All I go by is what's on there. Yeah. And there's no detail. And I mean, some of your tanks aren't even on the print, so yeah. I have no idea what you're putting in here. If you're talking about just coming here with 100, 200, 400 gallon tanks and letting it rip, yeah, I mean, it should have been four inch with three inch traps and all kinds of business. And, and a floor sink, not a floor drain. 
Yeah, like in commercial kitchens, yeah. you see the big squares yeah. in the floor yeah. and the stainless steel sinks just open air dump into them for bigger. This is not my world at all, right? I don't even know how this whole thing works, but you know, when I'm talking to them about now draining tanks, backflowing tanks into this 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 thing, they they ran three inch PVC. They're saying that that's not going to be enough. Not going to be able to handle the water flow. All right, I'm going to I'm going to try to get get in touch with Steve again too. So I'll see. Okay. All right. All right, guys, I actually am going to grab Lee right now because this could be a huge deal if we have to rip all of the plumbing out of the entire place. It would be a huge, huge amount of labor, money, cost, all that stuff. So we're going to grab Lee and go head back across the street to Legacy and see what the hell is going on right now. Yo. Hey. Not good. What? They're saying that all the plumbing's not the right size to be able to drain any of the tanks. So... On the on underground, like on the drain, in the drains. Yeah, drain tiles, everything. Okay. So uh, <laughs> hopefully that's not the case, or we're in pretty big trouble right now. So we'll see. So what do you think about the fact that I mean, like, I don't know how this 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 the drains work here, mm -hmm. as far as like like when we're backflowing or changing water or doing whatever. Like, where does that go? So you're gonna have a valve off of the sand filter, and that's your waste valve, and that should be going directly into it. And that's plumb permanent. Be there? <laughs> See, I don't even, we didn't do any of that. Okay. We didn't do any of that. So, you know, it's like. <laughs> well, we do that because they have their pipes, they leave them going up. I thought once they do the concrete, and then that way we can come back in. That's what Steve and I were. But the problem is, is that, that what Steve is saying is that there's no way that the. He doesn't think that the pressure of backwash is going to hold this three inch pipe. Mm -hmm. Do you agree? I don't know his pumps. That's the only problem. So I don't know exactly what he has planned for the shark. Some of the smaller ones, three inch probably be just fine. Cause I've had three inch on a waistline before and I mean it's smaller pumps, but with shark, I don't know what he's using. Yeah. He if he's using multiple small pumps. No, it's a big, he says it's like 12,000 gallons per hour or something like, that, something like that yeah you guys we have definitely a huge issue when it comes to the plumbing side you got to remember that this isn't my forte right like i'm a reptile guy i'm used to using like a pondo vac to suck water out of things we're trying to run everything to where it's all like kind of just knobs and levers with these big tanks you got to actually backwash them and it has to go into the drains and stuff like that well we're finding out that the drains may not be able to handle the quantity of water that's going into the pump and that's going to be obviously a major problem i mean you've got to be able to do water changes and we're talking about some of these things have 25,000 gallons of water. Even if you're doing a 20% water change, you're talking about 5,000 gallons of water. It needs to go into the piping. Well, if the piping isn't big enough, it doesn't handle it, we can't do the water change. It's gonna be a major problem. So there's a chance, and I hope this isn't the case, there's a chance we may have to rip out all of the plumbing and redo all of it into larger piping. Um, that's a major problem. So we're gonna, uh, we're just gonna continue to talk about this and try to problem solve this out. But uh, this was not what I needed today, not at all. Uh, 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 uh. 32. I thought you didn't know how to count. So you, I have to count though, you know? I can't you just realize. Your fingers, your teeth. And you guys can see that she reacts to the toothbrush. She thinks, oh, oh, there it is. Oh. Because oh. crocodilians, they still have those ISOs where Don't those bite me, pressure receptors all around their mouth. Kind of hard to see on an albino because they kind of blend in. That it's almost like when you're at the doctors and they use a little rubber mallet and they hit that joint in your knee and it makes you kick. Yeah. It's a natural instinct for them I to immediately that. turn and snap. And there's nothing they can do about so it. So that's why when you touch an alligator's mouth or something, she can't help it. We turn and bite. It's a reflect. Ooh, I was gonna say a reflection. <laughs> it's a reflection. All right. Well, it looks like Freya's looking good. It seems like she's not gonna have to go to the dentist for a few. Uh, the, uh, yeah. Did she get a lollipop? See, Sam, there's a lot of details. I can't just go stick a pipe in the air and expect everybody. You know what I mean? I need, I need detail. He said that a four-inch pipe probably wouldn't handle it either. Right. You know, it's too much. Oh, yeah. And so he said what we might have to do is get a container that we backwash into that and then let it grab the teeth down into the drain. That's so easy. Buffer. I can, yeah, yeah, that's easy. But, but we need to make sure this is good for that stuff over here. So it turns out that we're not gonna have to rip the plumbing out, which is really good. We've just spent an hour and a half going over everything, but we do have to change our philosophy on how we're gonna drain things. And again, I'm not a filtration guy, so I don't really know much about this. So this is, I'm learning as I go here too. So basically, rather than having just a normal drain like this, that really wouldn't be able to handle the flow of when we're doing a water change. Basically what we're gonna have to do is 
what they call a floor sink, which is like something you'd see at a restaurant. It's basically a sink that sits down on the floor and then you can drain into that. It can handle a much more higher volume of water. So we have to do that. We have to put five floor drains in and we did figure out, we forgot that we didn't trench the predator tank. So now we have to trench the predator tank to get a drain there because we just completely overlooked it. On a positive note, look what showed up. Actually, Universal Rock is actually the weeping wall that will go on the back of the koi pond that actually has all the water that we found. And you can kind of see how it looks very similar to the actual theming that we have in the koi pond. So we wanted that kind of carryover from the weeping wall to this. So we're going to have to install this in the next couple days. We have to put Dura Rock on, seal it, then this goes up, and then ultimately we plumb through and then the water comes down. So this is awesome. Great to have this here. Uh, that's a huge benefit. But I will say this is a pretty heavy piece. So it's going to be pretty difficult to install this, but I think we'll do it. Hope you guys enjoyed today's video. If you did, there's a playlist that you can watch all kinds of videos. You can also hit that subscription button. It would mean a lot to me. Also, hit that like button while you're down there. Have a wonderful day, Reptile Army. Remember, I could have been home right now. That's fine.